I underwent the process I didn't know exists after I'd been involved in constellation work for several years. What happened for me when I was operating in the field as a facilitator, you also know that if you are a participant, you have to allow yourself to be guided. Right? You go in, you have no idea who you are representing, and suddenly something starts happening in your body. You get angry or scared or you collapse, right? Something starts happening in you. As a facilitator, I have to be completely empty, like in a way you are as well when you participate as a, as a, as a representative. But I have to be more so empty because I have to be like the channel for the entire family field. So I have to be open to, if somebody collapses on the floor, be able to hear what might it mean, what other information may be needed, um, who else would we need from the family system to be brought in to assist in the healing. You, 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 you know how the, how the constellation unfolds. So as a facilitator, I'm like this empty channel to to the family system to be guided in each moment as far as what to do because I have no idea how I am going to help somebody, right? It's completely unknown to me how many generations back an issue may have happened. Sure, Beth Hellinger has come up with these orders of love, the basic guidelines, but they may or may not apply. So I have to be completely, as a facilitator, completely empty, trusting in the field that each moment as a person displays a new <laughs> symptom or a new feeling or a new thought, I have to somehow you know, be available and then deal with it. And it's not happening in my thinking mind. When I was thinking before, when I first started and began, when I had my thoughts involved, I would mess everything up. I couldn't, I couldn't have a thought even I want to make sure I'm doing good work for a person. I want a good outcome. They have to have a good resolution afterwards. I couldn't even have the intention of actually doing something that I thought was good or right. I couldn't even have that. I had to be completely and utterly empty <coughs> so I could hear what was needed. And if the constellation didn't go good in my estimation that may not necessarily mean that I did bad. It may mean that the family system wasn't available to give more information, for instance. Another piece of information was needed and maybe that would come next year. It's like I had to learn to completely let go of all ideas, of all everything that I learned, what I thought was right and good. So I ended up by trial and error, right, learned to be such an empty vessel that I could trust in the field to such a degree that no matter what happened, I knew it would turn out good. And the more I did that, the more things were really going good. You know, we had these beautiful outcomes. And what ended up happening after several years, I became, when I was in the field, I was there was this sense of aliveness and adventure because I never knew what the next moment would bring, what the next person would say. There was this preciousness of being held, like I knew I couldn't fail. I could not fail because somehow the field, the family field, the knowing field would guide me towards an outcome. I, as Margaret Riddler, could not fail no matter what, and even if we had to wait half an hour, at one point we had to wait for half an hour for a new movement to show up in the constellation, to withstand not knowing for half an hour, but I learned to just trust. I just trusted and I am not given an answer. I have no idea how to resolve this. We just have to wait. So people had to stay in their constellation representation for half an hour because I didn't know what to do. So I learned from constellation work that I don't have to know anything and that what I do need to know will show up in the right moment. I just have to wait and be open to hearing. And 
empty enough so I could hear. So what happened for me when I really got this enormous trust and sense of preciousness of being this empty vessel in the field, when I got outside, when the workshop was over, I went back to Margo. I did life the way we all do, back to thinking and wondering and fearing and judging, right? I, all of that immediately came back up and it became really unbearable because in the field there was this aliveness and this flow and this trust and this safety, an enormous safety to be held by this greater field. And when I went outside, when we, the circle closed and I went back home in my car, you know, I was no longer part of that field and I was back to Margo. I now had to take care of everything again. I was now in charge. I had to figure things out. And it became unbearable. So I began saying a prayer and I said, I want to live how I live in the constellation field, not knowing completely from empty space in my life. I want to do that out there. That became my prayer. I said it every day again and again and again. I just couldn't stand being Margot Riddler. I just couldn't stand what nonsense was going on all the time. And so um, so I learned how to do be so empty out there. But it took everything from me. I lost everything. I lost my home, my money, my Margaret Riddler structure, all of my thoughts, my programming, my beliefs, my ideas of what is right and good and proper and meaningful and purposeful and important. Everything was taken away from me. It felt like a scrub brush went inside and cleaned out everything that was there. Everything that was part of Margaret Riddler was cleared out. And the first thing that went was constellation work. I couldn't even have words to speak about it. it was couldn't explain it, couldn't, nothing, it was gone. Like the whole slant, the file of that particular thing that I'd learned and done for so many years, it was gone. How to be a sister, how to be a mother, how to be a friend, <laughs> how, to, how to do life in the normal way. It disappeared, I couldn't, uh, I just couldn't do life anymore. And it wasn't that I had chosen to walk away from this work and I had chosen to get cleaned out. That was a process that happened on its own. And, and this whole thing started when I had a flash knowing come to me one time. And I saw that all of us are empty inside of the personal self we think we are. So we all think we are these particular persons with these ideas and the, you know, the likes and dislikes and all of this. And I had this very clear visual come to me and I saw we are empty. These bodies are empty of a self. The self that we think we are or have doesn't exist. And that's when I walked away from constellation work. I said, if we don't have a self, which is what we are doing when we do healing work, right? We work on the self, we're improving the self, we make it better, we make it more functional, whatever, or less sad, more, more this. If that doesn't exist, what am I doing with constellation work? What is my life work all about if that doesn't exist? So I walked away from one day to the next, really. I just couldn't. My conscience didn't allow me to continue saying, yes, I can help you improve yourself, when I knew there wasn't a self. But I didn't know what it meant that we are empty and we don't have a self. So um, two years into this emptying out process, I, uh, by then I was basically completely homeless. I lived in Mexico at the time. I ended up traveling like a vagabonding, penniless, homeless hermit in Central America and Mexico. And um, I 
I'm just sharing this story with you, not that this should or might happen to you. I am coming back to tell you my learning. Yes. Because there's a learning in what I went through. I asked for this. I said I want to be as empty as I am here, out there. And I learned what is required. I had to go through this process, but I asked for it. Only later did I remember that I'd asked for it. But I became truly, I, I, I was rendered so helpless as far as Margaret being able to do anything. I had to learn to completely rely on, I eventually called it nothingness, because there was nothing inside me anymore that could put out anything, I want this, or I should do this, or I have to plan for the future. All of these things were, that are normal to us in life, they were gone. And so, two years into this process, I came upon Bernadette Roberts, who is a woman, a, a, a Catholic uh, nun, who uh, had been in the, in, the, in the Catholic nunnery to come to the union of God, where you negate yourself to such a degree that, and, and keep asking to be linked with God, so you, the, the self and God become just merged. And so when she acquired that, she said, well, I've accomplished what you can accomplish in the Catholic Church, and she left, she became a, she became a mother, a teacher, had four children, and 20 years down the line after having accomplished it, the, 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 the ultimate experience you can get to in, in the Catholic Church, she had a no-self experience. Her self fell away. So she had the experience of being empty of the self. She called it no-self. And when I read that, it's like, oh, well, that's what's happened to me. I am living her experience. I had no words. I couldn't, I couldn't name it. I couldn't put any, I couldn't make sense of it. But essentially, it's this spiritual awakening journey towards awakening or enlightenment. You know, these are lofty terms, but they are not lofty because we can actually live this. We are supposed to live this. We are supposed to be living from our true nature, which is emptiness. We are supposed to have this ability to live and operate and move in life from this empty place without that self in place that keeps it stuck all the time and not being able to really hear and move and do life from this, from our true nature. Our true nature doesn't have thoughts. Our true nature doesn't have emotions. Our true nature doesn't have beliefs about what's right and wrong. Our true nature is not bound by any of these things that we are bound by. It's truly a completely empty inner, inner is not even right, it's, a, it's, it's like air. You can't touch it, you can't contain it, you can't put it in a box. And yet it's everything. So the self is like completely tight. Thinking, feeling, emoting, instincts, it's all tied to the body. It's inherited. How your body is wired is inherited through your family system. It's just a body thing. The way you think, it's a body thing. We have it overlaid over you know, culture and society and religion, you know, they, there's all of these different ideas, but it's at the very core, it's a body thing. The thoughts we think, the emotions we feel, the chemicals that run through our body that make us do the certain things that we do. It's all body related and it's tight. Our true nature has such a hard time to ever express itself and move through the body freely. It could but it hardly ever does because it's so tight. And when we do healing work, usually we just exchange one negative thing for a positive, so it's still there. We are not erasing this thing. We just keep moving it around and the structure stays the same. So look, who we really are is 
nothing. There's nothing in here. There's nothing out there. We are everything. We are nothing and everything. And everything is the same thing. It just moves through us in the particular ways the body is wired and programmed. So my invitation today is let's take these things down. Let's make space. Let's not improve it. Let's not better it. Let's not make this structure more whole and more complete. Let's collapse it so what's there, what's always there, look, it's there. It just can't move through it. So let's collapse this structure to whatever degree it's possible. So what's always there, your true nature, your true essence, has Base, then you know, I have to have another one where all of these are collapsed. I have them in my head, <laughs> and, and it's so hard. So, this thing cannot know what your true nature is, it cannot know it because it's what's containing it, it cannot ever know what it is, and it fears the collapse of it because it only knows how to do this. Do you understand this? This thing is your, is, this thing wants to get free. <laughs> this thing, it says, I want to be free. It was in there. It says, I want to be free. This thing wants to be free, but it's also terrified to be free because what it means, it has to collapse. In order to be free, in order to live from your true nature, this thing has to collapse. So it's terrified of its own death in a way, right? So it's a no-win situation from this place. If you want to have freedom from this place, it's a no-win situation. You can't have freedom with this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Freedom is when you look at it, you see it, you collapse it to let it go, and you start operating from this. And from here, you won't have thoughts anymore that, well, you just do this. You won't have thoughts anymore. This is thinking, this is feeling, this is emoting, this is knowing, all of the things you've studied, you learned, you understand. If this is collapsed, look, you have nothing to back over. What are you going to rely on? It's all gone. So a whole other way of knowing, a whole other way of doing life, a whole other way of understanding, of living, of experiencing, happens when you live from your true nature. It's no longer going to be this. You won't know how it's done because this cannot know it. Something completely different is happening when you live from this place. You, there is going to be safety, enormous safety experienced here. There is flow all the time experienced here. There is an understanding how things work together from a much greater field because can you see it's all the same, right? It's no longer separated out, right? So you'll be able to see, it will look through your eyes and see things in a very different way. You'll be able to see connections, how things connect. It's a very different way of operating. You still have your body, that doesn't disappear. But the mind, the continuous nonsense of the mind, the emotions, the instinctual fears, the drives, all of this, when that's calmed down, when it has been released, you have an empty vessel, right? You, what I was learning to do, be an empty vessel in consolation. So I would be able to hear in, from the collective family field what's necessary. You'll be an empty vessel in your own life, and it will, your true nature will look out your eyes. I mean, it's already looking out your eyes, but right now it has this filter to look through. Right? So if you don't have the filter anymore to look through, what might you see? What might you experience? If it doesn't tell you anymore this is right and wrong, or this is good and bad, or this you can't do or shouldn't do, if you don't have that filter in place, if somebody attacks you, if you, if the, if the immediate response that usually comes up isn't there, what happens, right? It's a very different experience. 
So it's not about bettering, it's not about making better, about improving, it's a completely letting go and allowing your true nature to surface and be in charge. And how you're going to do life, you won't know, because the known is everything you inherited and what you have accumulated with culture and right in your life experience. It's very, very, very different. So, constellation work hasn't evolved for me because I don't do it very much. What we're going to do today is whatever Margot has always done, <laughs> but I'll bring my awareness to the table. So we'll see what unfolds. And the other thing, so I, I learned so when, when you start, when this stuff collapses, you'll have a very different understanding immediately of everything. Immediately. And one of the things I realized is that, okay, we are all this empty nothingness, which is, you know, this thing can't understand it. But we are all that. So the only thing that's trapping it is how, we, how the body functions. I call it a mental, emotional, instinctual structure. That structure is there in all of us. It's part of the body. We inherited it. How our mother's egg and father's sperm came together, it created the body. How we are going to think, feel, know, and understand life. God said at that moment, what you inherited from your father line, what you inherited from your mother line, how you would think, feel, and behave you, that God said at that moment. And from then on, you know, things came on top from culture and, 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 and your family system and upbringing. So by us working in this field, I want you to take every constellation as your constellation. I'm holding the view that each person that is going to work will have, in one way or another, a healing for each person present. So you are responsible to extract from each constellation what is right for you, what you need to hear. That's why I had the candles lit, so you will be guided, you'll hear, oh, I need to say sorry to, oh, I need to, right? I need to bow here for this situation. I need to just drop this because it's, it's old, it's 50 years old or something, right? So every movement that we're going to do right now with each person that's going to be working, it's also your constellation. If you're, as a representative, extract from every representation, from every movement, what is right for you. So you walk away filled with ways of releasing and letting go of your programming. Do you understand? So yes, we're going to work with individual people with their family system, but because it's all programming, we all carry fear and anxiety and shame and terror and money issues and not feeling good about ourselves. We all carry it in our own way. So however it is going to be shown us in the field for this particular person, family system, you extract, you're <coughs> responsible, you extract for yourself what's right for you. So we're not actually working just for this one person, we're working for everyone with its constellation. And the way I pick, I don't know who, who is going to work when. I will just have a sense, this is the person we're going to work with, and please trust if I don't pick you and you feel like, oh, I have to be picked, I'm not in charge, I just explained, I'm empty <laughs> vessel. I, I follow orders. I follow orders and the greater field knows how, which person's family system is going to be of most benefit for everyone, right? So that's how we're going to work. If I pick somebody, you're not special or <laughs> yeah, I have favored you out. It's just the field is asking you to come and step in and be a source of healing for everyone.